particular fractures in children. Please. Good morning. <clears throat> Let me introduce our experience with treatment of supracondylar fractures in children. The incidence uh, of uh, ulnar nerve injury during treatment of such fractures estimated to be between one to five persons. Ulnar nerve may sublux or the medial epicondyle in many as 30% of patients. It's very mobile structure and very difficult to distinguish uh, exactly anatomic position of nerve uh, during the surgery. Ulnar nerve injury is most likely when a medial pin is placed within the elbow in hyperflexion. Soft tissue edema or excessive mobility of ulnar nerve may be predisposing factors for iatrogenic ulnar nerve injury. So we manage our patients with overhead traction for a couple of days till uh, swelling will disappear and it makes uh, surgery easier. Uh, acceptable way to avoid nerve injury is palpation of medial epicondyle but as we told uh, before, uh, nerve is very mobile and palpation doesn't uh, prevent nerve injury. Uh, another way is perform incision above medial epicondyle and do visualization of the ulnar nerve, then put pin. It makes morbidity uh, bigger of this procedure. Another possibility to use just lateral pins for fracture fixation or insertion medial pin from lateral side is technically not easy and doesn't prevent injury of the ulnar nerve by the end of the pin uh, when it passed uh, cortex. Fixation of supracondylar fractures by two lateral pins does not provide enough stability and sometimes may not prevent secondary displacement of the fracture fragments, especially rotation. Nevertheless, it should be recognized that two lateral pins are about 30% less resistant to torque than crossed pins. And you may see this patient had anatomic reduction before and one week later on control, he has rotational displacement of the fracture. During the last five years, 20, uh, 224 children with supracondylar fractures were operated in our department. Before use of nerve stimulator, we avoided applying medial pins, especially in cases with swelling around the elbow. In all cases, we use nerve stimulator, permanently connected to pin during all time of wire insertion. We based our research on two papers, one of them localization of ulnar nerve during percutaneous wiring of supraconal fracture in children by Mikhail and Stanislas. And the second pa the paper is predicting ulnar nerve location and pinning of supraconal humeral fractures, wink and uh, others. Both papers uh, uh, had deal with location of ulnar nerve, but not monitoring during the insertion of the pin. We used nerve stimulator, Stimuplex uh, Brown Company. We use adhesive skin electrode on the positive uh, cable and uh, to needle negative cable. Uh, transdermal stimulation current was 5 milliampere with frequency 2 hertz, pulse 0 0.1 milliseconds. Stimulation into the tissue, uh, stimulation current was 3 milliampere no change in other parameters. Changing in additional equipment uh, were performed. We add the sterile set of cables, long connecting sterile cables uh, with a holder for key wire. Uh, after attachment of stimulation, the stimulator should be clear sign of stimulation of the ulnar nerve. After determination of exactly position of the ulnar nerve, K wire may, should be passed through the secure place. No signs of ulnar nerve stimulation should be seen at the time of K wire placement. Absence of nerve stimulation before K wire insertion, suspicion for nerve injury. 
you may see this uh, sterile set. Before we use also adhesive stick for positive electrode, but now we put it not sterile in any place on the body. A stimulator. One of cables goes to K wire and another one to skin, second contact. Flexion type supracondylar fracture. We do standard closed reduction of the fracture. Then we connect cables. It takes approximately one minute, not more. One end of cable we give to anesthesiologist and he manage nerve stimulator during surgery. And we try found anatomical position of the ulnar nerve and you may see clear stimulation of the nerve. It's transdermal stimulation. Then we check place when we would like to put key wire and be sure no stimulation in this place. Then we insert wire and all time wire connected to K wire to electrode. And if we will touch nerve, we will have stimulation at the same time. Lateral side stimulation, uh, lateral side wire doesn't need any monitoring. Then we check stability and reduction. You may see no stimulation on the wire which put through the medial side. And we check position of ulnar nerve. We see clear stimulation, so ulnar nerve is free and untouched by wire. X-ray control, anatomic reduction, stable fixation, achieved. We had 201 children with extension type of supracondylar fracture and 23 children with flexion type. Average age of patient was 5.3 years, ranged from 3 to 9 years. Open supracondylar fractures weren't included in this study. Also fractures with injury of brachial artery. Closed reduction percutaneous QR fixation by two or four pins were performed in 206 cases. In 18 cases, uh, we convert surgery to open reduction. It was irreducible fractures by closed manure. In all cases, irritation of ulnar nerve, clear muscular contractions were observed and place of pin insertion was immediately changed. In all cases, anatomical reduction was achieved. No cases of vascular injury were observed. No cases of secondary fracture displacement were noted. In two cases found transient post-operative ulnar nerve neuropraxy, it was less than 0.5% despite controlled stimulation during surgery. We can't find explanation for this phenomena. In seven cases, no stimulation from ulnar nerve was observed prior to reduction. And you may see one of uh, these cases. It's also flexion type, fully displaced fracture. No stimulation was observed and you may see bone, sharp bone end with the crush of ulnar nerve. So in all these cases, we did exploration and uh, release of ulnar nerve, then we do open reduction of fracture, then controlled fixation. X-ray control, stable fixation. On exploration in three cases was noted crash of ulnar nerve, which was caused by sharp bone end. Absence of stimulation of ulnar nerve in any place may be sign of nerve injury indicative for exploration of the nerve. 
Changes in original setting of standard anesthesiology nerve stimulator may be performed easy in each hospital. Use of this device is very simple, even in cases of emergency. The monitoring of ulnar nerve by nerve stimulators is reliable and makes insertion of wires secure. Thank you.